All right, everybody, away we go. Welcome to the call today. It is, I better make sure we're going live here. It is Friday, December 22nd of 2017. This will be the last TRC sales training call until the other side of the new year. So you want to lean in here today. Hopefully we have some people actually show up that aren't out there Christmas shopping and doing what they do to be with their families. But I appreciate everybody who made the effort to be here today. So um, I want to get right at it with uh, whomever I have. And I think probably if I have you, David, from my team, when I open it up, let's get into uh, grabbing the bull and running with it uh, by the horns here, because I want to make sure um, everybody is seeing the updates that you and I are working on when it comes to inside sales. I think that's one of the most important things that you and I have been working on. So when I open up the microphones, um, let's get right after it, okay? So bear with me one second while I do that and just confirm. David, that you're there. Are you there, buddy? Over here, Denny. Okay, pal. Hello. Good, good, good. So David, we, we have had um, a lot of conversations this week, you and I and Laura, and, and getting ready for 2018, we felt that we had to make a lot of adjustments on the inside sales call. I want you, for before I say what I found listening to your calls or what you did, I want you to tell these guys and gals what you heard. You know, what was the big difference from what you knew up to the beginning of the week till now? And you could be very, be like, give me the narrative first and then break it down for them. Because I think one of the things is we do want to talk about what is scripted. We do realize that there is a very important part of this that's scripted, but there's also a big concept wrapped around that. So why don't you give everybody a little bit of feeling for you know what what you thought the narrative was okay well with regards to the calls themselves it really had to deliver you know um what we wanted to do for them uh for for the lead uh, in this case so it's really putting them as the hero of the story and me calling them you know with the proper context and saying we sent you our strategic plan so in that one line that I have to deliver as effectively as possible, I have to, you know, be able to connect with them mm -hmm. and explain what our USB is and, you know, make them understand that this is why I am disrupting them. Right. So I think that's the most essential, uh, how, do you, how do you call this, um, clincher for, you know, for this entire week of what I learned. Okay. Um, well, of course, with regards to the changes that uh, we have done, it's also making that move from Vulcan 7 to Infusionsoft. Uh -huh. uh, the idea here is that, okay, I am calling all these numbers and I'm not doing it in the system that you have already established, uh -huh. which is, of course, um, you know, not a good thing to do. So making that move, making that jump from, from calling in Vulcan 7 and then transferring to Infusionsoft to transferring everything into Infusionsoft and then working from there, having the correct follow-up system, you know, just does things more effectively. Okay. All right. So what does so that mean? What does that mean? Now, the, now explain what that really yeah, means as far as what you say. Explain what that means. That sounds a little bit cloudy and a little bit confusing. Let's get specific for them. Mm -hmm. What does it really mean in how you do the job? I'm sorry. Can, can you be sure that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a bit, yeah. I think there's a little background. A bit low. Yeah. Okay. So, so how... What is it that you actually changed? I'd say... I'd say it's really more of a... Well, it's more than just a mindset. Even, you know, with just me calling these people um, and bulletproofing myself, I'm just there to call them and tell them that we sent them something in the mail. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know? oh. There's no hard sell. There's no pressure. Yeah. And more than just something, it's our unique selling proposition. Yeah, there you it's go. A gift. It's not vague. Yeah. There you, that's, well, there's the key it's point. Exactly what it yeah. Is. There, our, yeah, there's the key point here. Are you having trouble hearing me, everybody, by the way? You guys hear me okay? Check somebody. Tiffany, somebody tell me you hear me. I, okay. I got you. All right, good. Thank you, gang. All right, so I want you to get specific. This sounds a little bit cloudy. I don't know if you're hearing me okay or what, but this sounds too cloudy for me. I want you to get very specific about what it is that... Well, I listened to three of your calls last week, and we can do it again this week if you'll just re-forward those. We'll show everybody what we discovered, but what I was happy about. I was happy about that you brought each lead to a conclusion. 
all those people that you were talking to, you actually brought them to a conclusion, which was really important, right? That's really important. The, the, what I went over with the mastermind group yesterday, a very intense call. With, these are some of the elite agents in the world. These people are doing 40, 50, 60 deals themselves, let alone their teams, producing somewhere around 400 to 650,000 GCI. And obviously, we have folks that do 100 to 250. That's a lot of money, okay? And even all of them have the wrong standard for bringing things to a conclusion. So the reason for an inside sales effort is to root through whatever contact information you have. They could be... Told you. Whoop, guys, we're live. Guys, we're live. Yeah. Star six us. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, thanks, guys. Hello. Yep, you, you were live, Doug. There was just a little noise there. So, so the point was, when you look at this, you, you're, you're looking at going through all this, David, and saying... I've got to get conversations, number one. I don't care how many leads you all think you need. It, they're irrelevant. What you need is a conversation that brings somebody to a prospect. That is the reason for inside sales, right? And to give it the correct nomenclature, or at least the way that we believe here at the TRC, is that we say, look, a contact is a contact is a contact. And what we want to do is bring that contact either further into relationship with us because we're not selling houses. We're manufacturing relationships that yield the sale of a property. That's what we do. We manufacture relationships. And the fact that we see that, by the way, that's true for many or if not all services, uh, service businesses, okay? You're really servicing somebody mm -hmm. in the context of guidance. So in order for somebody to trust you as their guide, I want you to take me up a, a Mount Everest and it's going to be windy and I could fall off Mount Everest and I could die. Right? That's the extreme analogy. Now you come backwards a little bit and soften a little bit and say, look, I could really screw this large financial transaction up. Why should I use you as a guide? So the whole reason for inside sales is to make sure we are showing them, demonstrating in every way possible and quickly when it's the first call, why we should be considered as the guide. See, I think that's what everybody is trying to do. You know, they get on the phone and there's so much pressure to be chosen right in that moment, right in that moment. Well, it just doesn't work like that. You have to build relationship so that they begin to trust that choosing you as a guide is a good choice. And that just flat out takes a process. It can be very short. It could happen that very first phone call. You pick up the phone. Somebody says hello. And you say, look, I noticed that you expired. And we go through the script. And they say, well, you know what? I'm interviewing agents. I'd like to have you come in. Great. When? Friday. Super. See you then. And so you can go that quickly into an opportunity where you say something well enough on the phone. And they don't know you. But all of a sudden, maybe there's recognition in the marketplace where they're comfortable enough to trust that inviting you over is not some sort of a risk, that you're a viable opportunity. Or, hey, send me the information, which means when it comes to me, I'll vet you, I'll look you up online and make sure you're not a serial killer, and then I'll let you into my house, right? Make sense? So the, so the minute you're trying to do business with people that you don't know, and they don't know you, as, as proud as we are, and we think our brand and our sign, what do you mean you don't know me? There's a lot of people in every marketplace that don't know the very top producers at all because their reticular activator in their brain is not geared towards paying attention to that until it matters to them. So we have to understand that it's really, really important to make sure we are humble enough to be a servant at that first moment. Right? That's the key. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be soft. It means you should be aggressive in the articulation of why you're serving them. So I, I think now you have a very short window, and this is where scripting becomes absolutely paramount. You must understand that in that first line, you have a very short window where you are going to get hung up on, no doubt about it in some cases, because look at I actually stopped some lady yesterday. Every time I get a call like that, you know, that's a solicitation, I absolutely will listen and see what it is that they're trying to get me to do, okay? Because I want to hear their script, David. So yesterday, a gal calls me up, and, and I really, I, I got to tell you, I just hate these scripts that have some obnoxious opening first line. And the first line was good. Here's what she said. 
I'm calling from David so-and-so's office. I like that. And I asked you to maybe experiment with that a little bit because if you're in the Philippines and I'm on Cape Cod and we're trying to do Boston or Cape Cod, whatever we're trying to do, I think it's okay to say I'm calling from Danny Griffin's office. I think that's okay because that might be something that, that actually says, mm, this sounds like a professional approach. Why are you calling me from there? You know, we're, we're pre-programmed to understand that that happens because we might be getting a call from the doctor's office. I'm calling from Dr. Nelson's office to remind you, Danny, that your teeth are supposed to be cleaned this Saturday at one o'clock. Please call us back to confirm. We're used to hearing that. We're conditioned to hearing that. So we have to be good observers of how the way the world actually works when it comes to telephone communication. You with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So now that's when you and I made some specific changes to the script. You tell them what we talked about from last week's call to now. What didn't I like? What didn't I like? Okay, the major... Sure. Okay, the, major, the first one would be that short break whenever I would call someone's name. Okay, hey, Danny, and then there's a pause. Right. You know, it, some people might not notice it, but it matters a lot. That, that short pause, that like one or two second pause. Right. And that can already, you know, condition the mindset of, of, of people. And then they hear all of a sudden my voice, which is uh, someone who is not a local in the area. Right. You know, it, it preconditions them to think a certain negative way. So that's one yep. I'd say that we we uh, talked about and tried to lessen or, or work on. The second would be me saying that we sent them something in the mail, yeah. which does not really convey anything at all. There's no context. It's vague. It's ambiguous. Nothing. It, it does not create that, that connection, you know, with, with the lead. So again, it's a very minor change, changing the word thing to our strategic listing plan. Yeah. And with the calls I sent to you, um, me saying strategic listing plan, again, we already formed conclusions. It may not have been the one wherein it became from lead to prospect, right? but it, it's a conclusion nonetheless. Right. So, you know... David, did you say, David, did you say, David, 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 did you send those to me today? Because let's play them okay. right now while, while we have this context. What he's saying, let me reiterate this. When you're all looking to scripting, what's the script? What's the script? Well, a lot has changed in the way that we believe you, you should be approaching folks, and that is with content that matters, and that content is the essence of what makes you unique. And again, if you're a part of this TRC community in any form or fashion, you've heard us say thousands of times that a professional strategic plan is the essence of what we're pr trying to promote, is that we want you to differ differentiate yourself from the pack by saying you take a professional approach. It doesn't mean that I'm more professional than the next guy or gal. That's not what it's saying. What it's saying is that, look, I take a professional approach to listing and selling properties. I take a professional approach to helping people find the property that they like. Well, what does that mean? That means I have a very clear plan. For listings, I have a seven-step plan. For buyers, I have a six-step plan. Now, of course, those are universal steps that any buyer or seller would go through and perhaps any agent would take a buyer or seller through. But what's unique is that I've put them in a certain order that I know works best through my experience. And if you want me to deep dive into any one of those, I can. So there's the full articulation of the belief system. So if you're talking about mindset, I think that's the most critical piece is that you wrap your head around that mindset that we are unique because we take a professional approach to listing and selling and helping people buy. And that has yielded or birthed these clear plans. They're easy to understand at their surface, but what you'll notice is that you'll need us as guides because it's much more complex than that surface. We want you to understand what we're doing for you or what we will do for you. And this is where it happens, you know, very early in that, in that situation where, where you get somebody on the phone, you don't know them, and, and you have to inject that so quickly. Look, I just took, what, 60 seconds, 75 seconds to say it all. You don't have that. You might have seven. Hey, David, it's Danny Griffin calling from the Griffin Realty Group. The reason I'm interrupting your life is because I saw that you expired on the marketplace, the MLS. So what I did was I sent you out my strategic listing plan. I thought it could help. 
So I don't know whether you took the market, your house off the market intentionally or something went wrong. Either way, I believe it will help. Now, if I just stop there, and I, and I went a little bit more verbose because I was being a wise guy by saying, I'm interrupting your life because I want you to understand what you're doing. You're interrupting them. You're picking up the phone. Somebody's Christmas shopping. Somebody's kid is sick. Somebody just got yelled at by their boss. Whatever it is, life is happening to people. And in this digital age, it's weighing on them heavier than it ever has before. So we're in this situation where there's all this pressure on people and we're picking up the phone and we're interrupting them. Okay, that's a problem for us because now we have to get in there. And the minute I hear a Filipino or a foreign accent that is not domestic, it could be me calling for you. If I was doing this for you in the Philippines, hey, it's Danny Griffin calling on behalf of David's office, right? And, and they hear me, they might become suspicious. Why is this guy with a, an American sounding accent calling me? So it's just context. And we have to be brutally reality about it. You could have to confront as salespeople, we have to confront the brutal reality of the situation, okay? Welcome to life, people are prejudiced. And when they hear a foreign tongue, they might shut down, right? And we've heard that and we've seen that in the way you've been treated a couple times. That's a fact of life, right? So now hitting those beats, I think becomes more understandable. And as long as the outcome is there and I can hear it as the business owner, I'm satisfied. And for all of you that do your own inside sales, I mean, we have Paul Cantu who does his own inside sales, right? So, so that's the challenge is that we have to understand why we're doing any of this, right? And then to whom are we making this call? Is that the right person? See, I think everybody gets upset. Let's just say if you follow a formulaic approach, it doesn't matter where you start. Let me give you an example. If there's a buyer internet lead or a seller internet lead, those are some of the hardest ones to convert to anything. Why? Because presumably on average, somebody that goes to the internet to begin to think out loud into the little white search box that Google offers or Bingya offers, you go in there and you think into that little box, which means what? You're really early most likely in the process. That's where you are. You're really early. So now imagine somebody picking up the phone and running onto the phone and calling that person in that moment. And what do we want? Right? Chris Egan, I heard you out there earlier. You still out there? Chris, you out there? Egan, lean in with me if you're there. So, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm here. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm that's okay. But, uh, but, yeah, you know, one thing, if I could just interject. Yeah, absolutely, come on. You're saying, you know, yeah. what, another thing you're doing by staring at that little white box and then your information is you're opening the floodgates to a ton of strangers. So you've suddenly got a ton of strangers emailing you because you, let's face it, these people who search for homes for sale, Louisville homes for sale, Cape Cod, whatever they're searching for, they're going to get three, four, or five people playing the same game that you are. Absolutely. And they're probably going to yeah. go register at different sites. Because they think for some reason they're getting different info from different sites. Right. So they're getting everybody calling them or right. emailing them or sending whatever and you're and that cattle call. So, right. so sorry, carry on. So no, no, but Chris, because I, because I think this is relevant for inside sales because look, as everybody's sitting here thinking about inside sales, what, the quality of the contact you're, you're, you're calling is everything. Uh, and again, I've, been able to build relationships with internet buyer leads in particular for a long time. I think I've forgotten. I think I was probably one of the earliest adopters way back in the mid 2000s with Google pay per click going off to my success website and then sitting on the phone and converting them. I mean, I can go back that far, Chris, remembering being in this world, right? And then obviously over the years it's changed, but this very calendar year, we will close as many deals as we have been from that effort. So, What's the point in bringing that up is that this is not me saying to you all, I wouldn't do internet leads. Okay. It's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying though, is you better understand the realistic, uh, the situation and marketplaces change this too. Right? So if you're talking to Cantu who's over in Seattle or somebody who's in his, so a hot marketplace, then if they're coming from out of town, for example, and they're ending up on your sync site, your market leader, your boom towns, um, whatever lead capture, uh, real geeks, IDX, I'll name them all if I can. They're coming in with a different context, right? Whereas if somebody's just sitting around in Kentucky and they already live there, 
they have a, con- a context that hey, maybe I'll I'll like kind of step up a little bit and, and you know expedite this a little bit, or, or I won't. I'm just thinking about it. You know, it's the end of the year. It happens a lot at the end of the year. People think, you know, I'm sick and tired of this house. I want to make a change for the new year. I'm thinking I'll move. Okay. That's not necessarily a serious thought, right? It's a whimsical end of the year thought. Now, all of a sudden, they're there for you, waiting for you to call them. And and just understand that the majority of the time, somebody who just starts there at a seedling of thought is very far away from you being able to get out into the field with them. Whereas, in the same breath, if you go run an open house and you have your prospecting sheet, not your lead, I I suppose it's lead the minute it's empty, but someone walks through the door, you have that live conversation that's similar, uh, might even be exactly like it, uh, uh, on the phone. I mean, it's going to feel a little bit more casual because you're face-to-face, but now you have this direct prospect. In either case... The reason for the conversation, the articulation of your value is to convert them to a prospect, period. I just can't, I I can't, constantly, I'm mind blown at how much business top producers throw away because they do not have a system that attempts, I know it won't do it ever perfectly, but attempts to bring all those leads, Chris, to a conclusion, right? So the same script is going to change its impact, lose it, gain it, depending on what you're calling. You follow? Chris, stay in the hot seat with me. Keep your mic open. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, you you, got to do something to to differentiate. And I think a part of that can be the quality and the manner of follow-up. You know, I I can say, honestly, that the... The, the, few, the few sync leads we have converted, we had an easier time converting because of the conversational emails and the educational emails hitting them from another side, building right. that right. continuity. Yeah. So, well, what's most important yeah. is nobody knows anything about how, and it's tough. You know, we have people all over the country. We have people in Canada, different country. So, you know, we, we have all these different factors that affect the way a buyer or seller makes a decision. But let's stay with buyers for a second because too many people have drowned in those and made that the priority and it shouldn't be in a marketing plan, period. If you want to run the business like it's supposed to be run, your, your goal should be to get as many listings as possible and control the outcome of the sale price you're looking at and the commission rate. You dictate the pace there. Um, but having said that, a balanced business is critical. So not to, to not ignore buyers, but to just to understand where they really are at in their decision-making process so that you can make a more intelligent sales book of business attempt, right? So in other words, if I have X number of assets as a salesperson to invest in trying to get contact information... Why, like, it would be insane to not consider and ask and mastermind and think about what is the best source of contact information where I could take that contact quickly to a prospect stage where they are willing to engage in relationship with me, where I can constantly add value on what they want, which is the insight about properties for sale or sold, depending on seller or buyer. And what they need, I can insert into that relationship continuously and steadily in the form of my unique selling proposition, which is my plan, right? Like we talked about yesterday, right? So, so now let's go back to the beginning. You've got these calls. Let's go some real calls. Did you send those to me? Where are they in Skype? Uh, or uh, they're better if you send uh, me. I sent them via email yesterday. Okay. Can you resend them now? Would that be okay? So that they're sitting at the top. Or do you want me to just quickly send them in Skype? No, 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 not in Skype. It might screw up where, uh, because I'm on the line. Please send them in the email again. That would be great. So Chris, after all of this, where we we now said, now Chris, let's go back to this. See, it's not just about the scripting and what we say and how we say it. It's also about the pace of follow-up meeting the pace of lead funnel, right? In other words, how many contacts I put into the database to be called, the dialer, whatever. I'm not going to argue about, you know, you guys know how passionate I am about left to right methodical bringing of conclusion with all these leads, then adding um, dialer technology to speed that up, sure. But I am not a fan of dumping into a dialer and skimming cream. I just... 
It's not best practices. I don't care what anybody tries to tell me. I will learn from the best in the world. I watched him do it. He never did it like that. So I know that their attempt was to bring them all to a conclusion, and he was named Remax number one in the world twice for that reason in particular. So, Chris, as we looked at dumping all of those things out of your follow-up, what did you think? I mean, is it exasperating to hear me say that as a salesperson, that you really should be linearly driving all of them to a conclusion? No, what, what I really thought, candidly, is I just thought, what a world of unnecessary chaos. Yeah. You know, because it, it just seems like a lot of the the wrong ingredients are being brought to my kitchen. I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> yeah. Unless I was running a pizza business and I was getting a ton of moldy dough with some right. good dough in the center, why am I doing that? You yeah. know, so, so I, need to, I need to put things into my funnel that are more likely to convert closer into the prospect stage. Yep. That's the, the main thing yep. uh, because it will just allow for, for efficiency and predictability of results. So, so, so that was that was the major thing. Uh, the other thing that occurred to me is, is candidly, it didn't really it, it, it didn't really have any any impact. It was the equivalent of if you just swept a huge pile of dust off my floor. You know, in other yeah. words, I didn't feel like I, I didn't feel like I, the, the business was going to go south because what I felt like, okay, great, get that crap out of the way. Yeah. So, so that just makes me take a, a step. Up in my thinking and, and yeah, cool. reevaluate everything. Cool. That's being All right. So, so now, yeah. So now you're in the mode of doing what I'm doing, getting some help on the phone, and I have two people because we've broken up this assembly line left to right. We we practice what we preach. So we have one person, David, going in, and again, he's cheating towards um, any kind of a seller contact information, potential sellers. That's his primary focus to develop that business for us. So he has the job. It's a very simple job. Hey, Chris, it's uh, David calling from Danny Griffin's office. Just want to let you know that we saw that you expired on the MLS. So we sent you out Danny's strategic plan. You'll be getting that in the mail. So um, we don't know whether, you know, and again, he could go into the next or he could just stop there. If I go one more beat further, I'm not sure whether you took it off intentionally or whether it's something that went wrong. It'll help you either way. So I want him to say the shortest piece he can because New Englanders are nasty and they cut him off, right? So now the most important thing as the guy waiting down the line for this to come to me is did he do an effective job? That's the most important thing. If you're not doing this job yourself and you're beginning to expand, and this is how expansion challenges any sales funnel or any sales business, as you begin to expand the business, you are reliant upon taking what you once felt comfortable doing. This is why a lot of people won't expand their businesses because they're, they, they, they just keep that mindset that nobody can do it better than I can do it. So they stay stuck in this spot where there's no leverage and their business is completely dependent on their level of energy to pull this off, right? So that's why a lot, oftentimes in real estate, you'll see a lot of top producers absolutely exhausted. Right? They just look exhausted. They're running around crazy and, and they cross the scenario. You want to make sure you understand that I'm, wi I'm the witness, okay? Or my business is the witness for you all to see that at one point in time, I take, and here I am, the coach, the guide, a top producer, all those things saying, I'm going to give the responsibility, this massive responsibility for follow up to Laura. Well, it turns out, guess what? With a system and her personality for nurture, she's actually far better at that piece of it than I ever will be. I am probably far better where I have put myself, which is in the heat of the moment, being in the house, dealing with the heightened emotion of a seller who's not hearing that their property is worth what they had hoped somebody on a white horse would come with a big bag of money and pay them for, right? It's just not there. So I'm better at that real confrontational, difficult moment. That's a different kind of consult than Laura. But now, Laura's ability to methodically jump on this earliest piece and dive into this pile is not her skill set where it's David's skill set. And David is far better at that piece of it than both of us would be in that he is methodical, right? David's actually a high C personality, Chris. How about that for inside sales? See, if he's not proof in the fact that there is a system, I don't know what is. Because back seven, ten years ago, we would have said, well, you can't have that. You got to remember, I, I taught it. You have to dial up your D. 
That's what you have to do. I would always say no matter what personality type you are, as dominant, influential, steady, or compliant, in that moment on the phone, I taught very specifically, you need to dial up your D. You need to try to drive in there and fight for it. Now, I would still say that to an extent, but what I've learned is the power of content to change the need to do that. I've discovered this. I've learned my, my mindset, my perspective has widened to say, well, wait a minute. Why couldn't any personality type get the, 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 the playing field level based on good quality qu content? Okay. And, and I think in the beginning, we believed that content was homes for sale and homes that sold, okay? That is most definitely the content that makes buyers and sellers rabid for information. It's proliferated Zillow, Redfin, Trulia, all the more tech-oriented companies have done a masterful job at getting what these people want to them better than the industry ever did until they showed up. Now, you say, Wow, is giving away that access a me too business. Every software company's trying to fight for, well, our platform is so much, no, eh, not right. It's just not right. You're having a difficult time in that business trying to say that your platform is better than this platform is better than that. It's a real, it's a micro battle at this point in time. Nobody's in a macro way delivering for sales and solds better. So, that's bad news for all of us that cheat towards the platform. Sure, I would choose the best platform that gives high resolution pictures, easy to use. No doubt, those softwares are better platforms when it comes to that. But you're, that's not going to make you unique ever. You personally are never going to be unique. In fact, I'll make a case that I know a lot of agents in this group that have okay technology versus what claims to be a platform that's 10 times more or better, and they're better than other people using that, simply because they understand what the value ultimately is to the consumer who will become a prospect and then a client, and that is service through guidance that is correct and organized. Chris, you with me? Am I making sense? Yep, completely. So now we've got David. And we got a challenge. Guys in the Philippines, English is a second language, okay? So how do you take a guy like that, throw him in with a bunch of rabid Northeasters who are all killing each other on the phone every day? It's like putting butter uh, you know, on a, a snack for a wolf, right? So here we go. Here's what it sounds like so you can listen in. Hi, good afternoon. I'm looking for Kyle, please. Yes, thank you. Hi, Carol, my name is David. I'm with the Griffin Realty Group. And the reason I'm calling you is because we see that you have been designated as the administrator for the estate of Miss Alice uh, NFT. And I just wanted to let you know that we sent you something in the mail. It's our strategic probate plan uh, to help you and your lawyer obtain current value for the estate. Uh, in case, of course, the estate includes real estate. Okay, thanks a lot. Good. Alrighty. Yeah. Good. Well, good. Good. Hold on. I like it. Okay, a lot, a lot. You got it in. That's far better than before. Okay, far better. You with me, David? Mm -hmm. Okay, that is far better than before because that's a mouthful to say when it comes to probates. It was a little noise in my background here. I just shut off a heater. So let me, um, let me uh, turn this on uh, again. So everybody lean in and listen to this one. It's a little bit tricky to hear, especially for my visitors online. I'll do my best. But listen to this again. Can you guys all hear that? Chris, could you hear that since you're in my hot seat today with me? Yeah, I can hear it. Okay, here we go again. Hi, good afternoon. I'm looking for Carol, please. Who's speaking? Hi, Carol, my name is David. I'm with the Griffin Realty Group. And the reason I'm calling you is because we see that you have been designated as the administrator for the estate of Miss Alice uh, NFT. And I just wanted to let you know that we sent you something in the mail. It's our strategic probate plan uh, to help you and your lawyer obtain current value for the estate. Uh, in case, of course, the estate includes real estate. Okay, thanks a lot. Alrighty. Yeah. Well, Bye. What I, what I have in line now, is this something that you're considering on maybe selling in the future? No, there, there's nothing like that. Okay, stop. It, the key with probates that are a little bit more tricky, this is good, okay? 
So it's a little bit, now I'm confused, right? Because what I'm thinking to myself is, well, wait, what's the outcome? See, probate's a different in what way, David? Don't anybody cheat and tell them. What's the first thing that's different about a probate versus an expired phone call? Well, it may or may not have uh, property involved. Okay, are you clear? 41 seconds in here, okay? It was about 30 seconds to say what you said. So it's a little bit long. I would say we mailed you our strategic probate plan. Not we sent you something in the mail. It's our strategic probate plan. The the less you can say, the fewer words that you can say this in, the better. We mailed you our strategic probate plan. It's less because she was patient with you. Number one, she sounds depressed. Okay? So... You have to hear that tonality and you have to match the way that you're delivering this to that tonality that she's giving you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So so that's the point. So now let's listen to how now she's trying to get rid of you because you get lost. I'm going to go back to about 29 seconds and listen. You're lost because you don't, you have not determined. And I would say at the end of what you said, is there real estate to sell, right? Or is there real estate involved in the estate? Even better, I wouldn't say sell. Is there real estate involved? You know, were we correct in assuming there was real estate involved? Any of those ways that you wanna say it, the shortest and sweetest would be good because you need to get her to a point where she's answering a question, yes or no, right? Because you leave it you leave it in this spot where once you just send something you have to know if it's relevant to them right are you planning on relisting is there real estate to sell just simple questions like that i sent you this because we believe you know given your situation you need it that's the essence of the first beat but then it's like hey are you going to relist hey is there real estate involved right so, so great. Well, why don't you, you know, I sent it to this address. It will be in the mail. We'll follow up to make sure you got it and get out of Dodge because your job on the assembly line is to go no further. You have created an effective prospect for us. We do not want to try to do too much at this beat unless, of course, it's there. If it's there and it's obvious and they start to talk, then you grab it by the throat and you bring it in as an appointment. But that's it. Otherwise, we could be chasing them away, right? So let's listen again to the end of the call. Yes. We're on 29 seconds. We're going to go to the end of the call. Remembering you haven't asked specifically, is there real estate involved? It includes real estate. Okay, thanks a lot. All right, yeah. well, bye. What, ha what happened to Lena? Is this something that you're considering on maybe selling in the future? No, there, there's nothing like that in the estate, yeah. It's not. Oh, all right. Like that. Well, yeah. you'll find it's useful. So, yeah. Yeah, but no, 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 no. See, now this is it's the same problem as last week. It, it, you're done. It's not useful because we sent it to her and there's really no real estate involved. So it's not useful. So why are you saying that? You see what I'm saying? It's because, and I know why, you're nervous, you're there, it's almost there, you're trying to get me a clear conclusion. I understand it. But she's very clear with you. You're not that clear the way you asked, so it's yeah. it's not perfectly clear, but she says, no, there's nothing like that. She's being really polite. So I'll take back what I said about my fellow New Englanders. Here's a really polite gal that's trying to move you off the phone because now it sounds like you are no longer relevant. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. You know. Yeah. See, that's it. So it, 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 it sounds like there's no real estate. I'll take it in this case that there is no real estate because it sounds close enough to me. OK, so I'll accept it as something because I don't want you going back to her. It feels like a waste of time for me to spend our money sending you there. OK, so move off of that one. However, the tweak is you did not get clear about whether there was a situation that makes what we sent relevant or not. Okay, so there's no re no reason to say yeah. anything beyond that. Here we go. Ready? Next one. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hold on. Listen. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.
too much delay. Whatever is going on here on the phone line or whatever is happening, it's too much delay, right? So I don't know whether that's technology there or what's happening, but why is there a delay? Were you using the dialer on this one? Uh, I wasn't, but I couldn't hear from her end. I, I think th this was a problem with the connection or uh, with being central, I'm not sure, but Initially, I could not hear anything from her end. Okay, anytime this happens, we need to report this to Ring Central or anybody else. If, if technology causes this, we're eight seconds in of confusion, right? I know the recording starts a little bit early, but remember what I said. You might only have seven to ten seconds to break the ice. This is a problem right off the bat. Ready? So let's see where it goes. With the Griffin Realty Group. And the reason I'm calling is because uh, we see that you have been designated as the administrator for the estate of Mr. Clifton Ellis. And I just wanted to let you know that in case the estate might include real estate, we sent to you our strategic probate plan in the mail to help you and your lawyer obtain a current value for estate purposes. Good. I like it. That's really good. Okay? That's good. So, but, but again, you don't have to oversell that we're sending it to them and their lawyer yet. That could be a little premature. I know we trained on that, but we don't know that they even have a lawyer yet. Okay. We know, you know, it, it's more so that we sent our probate plan because we know this time could be confusing and this will help you get oriented, right? In the case that there's real estate involved, mm -hmm. right? It's more that you, you're jumping towards something that I think could be a later beat if they say, oh, my lawyer's taking care of it. Oh, no, no, we know that, uh, you know, or, oh, that's great. This will help you and your lawyer. And if you need an, you know, a valuation for state purposes, we'd be happy to do that. So let's listen to the conclusion. Okay. My daughter is a realtor and I'm all set. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Done. You're done. You did the job. You see what I'm saying? Let's listen to what yeah. you say. Let's see what you say after that. Oh, that's great to hear. Thank you so much, Ebra. Okay, she already hung up on you. But that's great. My daughter's a realtor. Beautiful. You're not going to break that relationship. Have a nice day, right? So here we go. Next one. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, Deborah. Hi. No, never take that break. Uh-uh. Never take that break. Never take that break. If this is your moment, that's where you have to dial up your D. You took a break there. So something's happening, and I'm telling you this is super, super subtle, but it matters. You cannot take that break right there. You lost control. I don't, we'll listen to the rest of it, but you, 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 that's your moment. The minute she says hello and she allows you to speak, you've got to say your piece like those other two calls. You follow that? Yes. It's got to be much smoother than that. Okay, much smoother start in the last two. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, Deborah. Hi. Hi, my name is David. I'm with the Griffin Realty Group. Uh, the reason I'm calling you is because I saw that your property expired from the MLS. And I just wanted to let you know that we sent to you our strategic listing plan in the mail uh, in case you're looking to put it back. And I just wanted to verify if I sent it to the correct address. It's the one at 15 Tower House Road, Falmouth. Is it correct? Yep, but I have no plans okay. of putting it back on the market. Oh, okay. Well, is this All something right. that maybe would change in the future? No, I don't think so. No. All right, well, we sent you something in the mail still, so if you do change your mind, let us know, and we'll be more than happy to assist you. All right, Deborah? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Now, I think that's a good call. I think that's a good call. I'm listening to that one, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, that's better. Like, and I'm not so sure, sorry, I was looking for my plug here. I'm not so sure I, I didn't hear a potential prospect there. Now, there's a no that I would pass on to Laura, okay? There's a no that when she okay. gets that when she gets that in the mail, I want a little bit more work done on that one, right? I think that's the key. Yeah. I, I really, I really, really, I really thought that one was much, much better a and that you didn't get a firm no there, right? Anybody else want to weigh in on that one? What do you think? Let me have some other people jumping in the call today. We got started with David in my office and Chris Egan. Chris, you can jump in. You know, we have a smaller crowd here today, given that it's the holiday week. Uh, let me hear from some of you. Tiffany, you're out there. Um, Doug, your mic was hot. Let me open that up. Uh, Parasite. Yep. Oops, Doug, your mic's really hot. Never mind. Doug, your mic's too hot. Um, Jamie and AZ, my girl out yeah, there. Yeah, I'm here. Yep. 
And, and what are you thinking? See, because this I'm is a, yeah, this is a hot moment for us here. You know, when we were working on, you know, what we were working on yesterday. What are you thinking as you're listening in? Um, as I'm listening to that last call, sorry, I'm at an open house for Will, and so I didn't get to hear that for the last ten minutes or so. Okay. Um, but the that last call that you just played, that would definitely be somebody that I would want if we had an ISA calling. I would want them to toss that over the fence to me for me to keep in touch with them maybe yeah. in a month or so. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Not even. I wouldn't even wait that long. I, I would yeah, see what I, yeah, what I want him to do specifically, and I'll tell him in front of all of you, that goes to Laura immediately. Lady said she didn't think she was going to sell, but Danny wants you to follow up to, you know, to see if you can tip her, right? Because here's why. A lot of people have expired because somebody did not help them strategically. They didn't have a professional plan. They sort of just took a shot at it and people get very disenchanted. And so here's this lady, you know, she's gotten other calls from people, you know, she's gotten solicitations. And so her mindset at the moment is there. Now, the other two are much clearer to me. One sounds like there's no real estate to sell. The other one, her daughter's a realtor. Those are clear. That's awesome. It's so wonderful to be able to bring stuff to a conclusion that is that clear. We know David and Danny are not the problem anymore. We've brought them to the, brought them to a conclusion. But in this one, I'm not so sure there's not an opportunity there. I'm not so sure that following up on this gal and saying, hey, we know we called you last week, but this goes to Laura. We know we called you last week because what it is is an opportunity for Laura to be a little bit more specific. She can look at where the property was. She can be, a, you know, it's a new it's a new voice that comes on the phone. It's American. It's a woman. It's sensitive. All those things that we think really make our system work better is that we're cognizant about that, you know, change from David Harvest something. It's a little bit of a seedling and it's worth it. It's a lead plus, right? A prospect minus. Let's call it that somewhere in there, but it's still to me a prospect lady said hello. And she, she, her thing was not that she rejected us. She rejected the concept of potentially putting it on, but wasn't very clear. Why not? So at least I would want Laura to find out why not. And is it something we could help her overcome? Then I'm satisfied. See, there's a classic example for all my most aggressive salespeople in the group to really, really hear this, right? So there you go. Cool. Next one. Somebody want to bring me like, I'm going to get Andrew in here. I've got my team in here. Uh, Kate, you might be in here. Um, anybody else that's in here, Flo that's in here. Hey, Flo, if you're on here too, especially you, because you're in the Philippines doing this for years with Gail, if, if you want to weigh in on any of this stuff too, I want to be very specific with you too. Is that you, Flo, or is that Angela? Yes. No, it's me. Flo. Okay. So Flo... Good, good. So, Flo, one of the things that I wanted to discuss with you is that Gail has a concern that you oftentimes are saying things that are not in line with a systematic approach. So do you see how specific it sounded when David was calling? I mean, it's very clear. And yet I can still find things in each call that definitely sound like when we train this intensely, there are definitely big gaps in what he should or could be doing. Make sense? Mm, yeah. So, so tell me the nature of the phone calls that you're, you're making to whom? Well, who are the leads? What do you say? We have, uh, well, the leads that I call are usually expired or out of state, not really out of state owners, but the people in the area farms rather. Okay. Well, tell me what you say to an expired. Let's go down that list. What do you say to an expired? Hmm. Okay. Uh, this is Flo. Hi. Hello, this is Flo. Uh, ring, ring. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Jamie's... Okay, ring, ring. Hello. Hi, may I speak with Danny? Yes, yeah, speaking. Oh, hi, Danny. This is Flo with Rosetti Realty. We noticed that your property didn't sell on the MLS, so we sent you a free gift in the mail. It's a 15-page booklet, The Seven Secrets to Property Seller Success. Have you gotten it? No, not yet. Mm, okay, it's in the mail, so you should be getting it pretty soon. And we also sent you a market analysis of what your property in Palo Alto could sell for, including an infographic of our seven-point strategic plan. So, Danny, would it be all right for Gail to drop by your property and analyze what went wrong? 
Uh, no, I don't, I don't need her to drop by. All right, stop. David, you tell me what you heard and you help flow. You're in the teacher seat now. Go ahead. You tell me. What would you do differently? Okay, well, in her case, she started with saying that you sent them a free gift. So, okay, that's good if they let you speak, which, of course, after that, you explained what it was. And it's, I think it's very long. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to say that it's 15 pages long and all of that. Because, again, too much could push the, the lead away. Um, and then from there, all of a sudden, you're asking them for an appointment when they don't even know exactly who you are or um, what it is that you sent to them. It could be, you know, something totally random. So... I, I, I guess it, it's a bit too aggressive to the point where in, you're already leading them somewhere when you don't even know uh, their context. But uh, at least your delivery was, you know, I, I think it was very smooth, though. Yeah. For, for, for a Filipina, it's very smooth. Yeah, well, she's, she's, you know, been doing it a long time and as a trainer. Hey, Tiffany, are you live on the telephone call, too? I see you up on the, the screen here. I would love to hear from you um, as well. You there, Tiff? Uh, yeah, I'm listening. Awesome. I'm, I don't. I don't call, so I'm just listening. Yeah. Any. Any. Well, I want you to think out loud. You need to think out loud and tell me what you were just thinking as you listened to her. Would what would you have said differently face to face? What would you have done if you were knocking on a door because you're very aggressive and and somebody expired in in your area? What would you do differently? Or the same? What would you do? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm kind. Of, I, I'm. I don't have experience over the phone. Try, try. No, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. Stop, stop. No, try. I don't accept that. Try. I, it doesn't matter to me. It's the same thing. We need... I would just kind of go based on, like, I would just kind of go based on, like, how the flow of the conversa conversation was. Like, I don't know. It, 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 it sounded kind of dry. It sounded kind of dry to me. Like, I yep. really didn't really hear a lot of emotion in her phone. And yep. I feel like the person on the other line, you have to be a little bit more sympathetic. Yep. Good. So. Keep coming. See, that's why I said don't don't back out of a sales call because you you're very good at that naturally. Now, what you're getting trained on by me is why you. So now, what did you think about her articulation of the plan that they sent? Because that's that's something that is different. That's the piece of content. That is that's the introduction. That not only do you have this because you have the reason I wanted you. You have a beautiful speaking voice <laughs> and a very steady flow, and you're outstanding face to face on the outside sale. So the question to you is, what did you think about her articulation? Because that's what I wanted you to hear. And Chris, I want you to hear it too. Parasec, all of you, anybody who's making these phone calls, I want them to hear what's unique because we have to dive in there. We've got this window yeah, to say. Yeah, that doesn't sound unique, though. That sounds like so, like, monotone. Like, yep. there's just not no emotion into it. Yeah, so cool. I, I don't know. I'm not getting anything out of it. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's good. That's a, that's that's important. Because if you're on the other side and you're hearing that, that's a problem. Um, let me hear from the, uh, you know, the, the people that live in North America talking about what would it be like if you heard that on the other end of the phone in Palo Alto. John Parasek, I'd love to hear from you. Your mic is muted. I'll unmute it for you. Um, I'd love to hear from you. John? Unless I put him to sleep today. Um, somebody. Somebody jump in here. Chris, jump back in. It's a tough... I know. The weekend before... A week before Christmas weekend. I get it. Go ahead. John. Somebody. Chris. I'm I'm still, I'm still here. I'm sorry. Bring, bring me up to speed. I'm yeah, yeah, it's okay. I know, I know. The gerbil fell off the wheel. ADD. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Multitasking. I got it. All right. Who's paying attention to me today? Somebody. Somebody tell me what they just heard and what's wrong with it. Somebody. Somebody lean in. I got Boise, Idaho on two lines. You know I know who that is. I should be hearing from one of you outstanding salespeople and what you heard. Tommy, Marcus. Lindsay, whoever's out there, let me hear from you. Kate, I better hear from you too. Hey, Danny, this is Darby. I've just got back. I'm going to. All good. A Andrew, go ahead. Andrew, you're up. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm new to this, but uh, it sounds like it's being read off a script. Yep. And you know, and and that that would kind of be off-putting to me as cool. a as a potential client. 
yep, on cool. the other end of the phone. I mean, when I'm doing it, yeah, I haven't called expired, um, so I don't, you know, I, I can't say, I can't critique it very much, but when I'm, you know, calling new leads and like that, you know, we have scripts, but I'm trying to internalize the script so I can kind of make points while getting the same points across. Yep. Awesome. I like it. It's good feedback. Flo, what'd you think? Flo? Hello? Hello, yeah. Hello. Okay, what'd you yeah. think? What'd you the think, Flo? The reason why Gail was saying that I sometimes went off script was what I... This is the script that we actually put together, um, yeah. uh, Gail and I, and, and sometimes it doesn't really work very well. So what I what I have been trying to do is uh, I usually interject between like uh, from Rosetta and we noticed your property didn't sell on the MLS. Instead of sending that, saying to them immediately that we sent you something in the mail, what I usually say is uh, we noticed that your property was taken off the market. Did you purposely take it off the market or did, or did it expire or something like that so that I could get some context in yeah. before I tell good. them about the 15-page yeah. booklet. Yeah, good. Because <laughs> what you, you're saying about me going off script, yeah. Yeah, you definitely need to change it. Um, I don't like that script, and I'll talk to mm-hmm. Gail about it. If Gail's telling you that, yeah. you know, th- there you go, right? <laughs> so, hey, Timmy Kerrigan, what were you saying here up on the screen? Sounds like call. And, and, also, Oops. and also, just, mm-hmm, call. also just to add, it's not usually uh, it's not uh, pretty usual for people to like let me immediately tell them to have Gail drop by the property and and analyze what went wrong because well, I don't really get into that part anymore. Yeah, I thought that was absurd. Actually, I I, I thought that part of it was absurd. Yeah. I I I thought that took everything that you had done well mm-hmm. and threw it out the door. I mean, I get aggression. Mm-hmm. I yeah. get it. But you haven't even let somebody breathe yet. You don't even know what they're saying. I mean, it, it, to me, this sounds way off and very difficult for you to be successful with. See, I think the problem is when we hire an inside sales staff, we, we, we get to this point where we presume that you should be getting these appointments, right? You're going to make these calls and I get this platform and we're going to hire you. And if you don't make appointments, you're fired, right? Well, what are you saying to get the appointments and to whom are you calling? I mean, you guys are calling people that might own a $5 million property, a $2.5 million property. And, and not that that's any different from somebody trusting you at 300, 200, 100. It doesn't matter. They have to trust you. And, and you are, um, excuse me, can you plug that in real fast there? Real fast. Thank you. So, sorry, I got to get a power plug here. So, so the point is here. There's an extension cord. It's right there somewhere. So the point is you've got to make sure that you are in a position to be set up for success, right? It's critical. Is there not a, hang on, there's an extension cord. Follow that black plug. That's an extension cord. Sorry, guys, I was about to lose this call. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I have the Jack Griffin behind the scenes here, my tech guy. Hold on, just realized I was going to say sleep. Jack Griffin, five gold stars. Not a boy. So the, the bottom line is you want to make sure you have something that, that is conversational enough, but yet it's clear. So Kerrigan, what were you trying to say here? I didn't quite understand this. Uh, yeah, um, uh, the observation that I had was that th- there was just no context. Like, like I said, it just sounded like uh, it was absolute definite of scheming the cream and you know, call, make an offer, call, make an appointment, call, make an appointment, call, make an appointment. That just sounded like there was no conversation there at all. So, yeah, I, I, you know, I was thinking, well, there's no chance in hell that that's going to happen. That's right. right. And that's so perfect. That was just my observation. No, look, it. that's why I wanted to hear this. You know, Flo, these are real Californians speaking up, too. I mean, that's Tim. Tim's in San Diego. Uh, I can't get John Parasek to bite on this and say hello to me here, but he's in California too, and Tracy, and I would want to hear, you know, I mean, it, does that sound like something? And Kyle, I don't know if that's you that came in a little bit later, Scotty Jones, um, and even heard it, but, but that would be the case is that, look, you know, you've got to stop trying to skim cream off the top as the primary objective. If you get it as a, as a you know, um, a, a positive byproduct of this effort, that's one thing. Right. So anyway, there you go. That's what I think. I think it needs to be tweaked really fast. So I would just be saying something much simpler. Yeah, I would. I, I would actually. Hmm. Tell me what you would say. Come on. I say, would actually 
actually prefer to be to yeah, I would actually prefer to be asking questions like, uh, which, are you thinking of putting it back on the market anytime soon, or why do you think it didn't sell, or yeah. something like that? All right, well, try it again in your own words. Try it again because I'm going to be all over Gail to fix this. Go ahead, try it in your own words. Oh, uh, ring, ring. Hello. <clears throat> may, I, may I speak with Danny? Speaking. Hi, Danny. This is Flo. I'm with Rosetta Realty. We noticed that your property didn't sell on the MLS. Did you purposely take it out of the market or did it expire? Okay, see, my problem with that is is right away, now you're like everybody else that's cold calling expireds. See, that's my problem where there's where there's nothing, that's like, there, there, it, it's a good question. Don't get me wrong, okay? But if if I don't if I don't change the relationship, and make it different from 17 other people who just called with some barbaric script. You, 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 you have no competitive advantage, right? So I think you have to have something that makes it a little bit more competitive. And, you know, we, we'll have to accumulate. That's why I said to David, David, I'm going to say this again. You need to make way more calls so that we can bring in way more information for these guys of these properties where, where there's been a result that's been achieved because we just keep going over and over and over and we see if there's a pattern and a trend that we can understand so that we find the unique selling proposition articulation clearly, right? Flo, there's nothing in that for me. You just interrupted my life. I'm pissed off that my house expired and it didn't happen. Maybe, maybe not. And, and you, you're asking me a question that's agitating the pain, which is fine, but you have done nothing to, to be valuable to me. So you're making yourself vulnerable, right? If I agitate the pain, and, and again, I know a lot of other coaches teach something contrary to what I teach, and that is, well, just agitate the pain and get them talking. Oh, man, that just feels so wrong to me in the long run. And I've been trained by the best in the world. We're not, we're not just coaches. My coach, mentor, did the job at the highest level. I do the job at the highest level. So I'm telling you, learning from him as a business person, building a sales book of business, I know that skimming the cream is not the context of top producers who really build a business. It's not. It doesn't mean that you can't learn these skim the cream concepts or keep them talking or agitate the pain, but put it in something where you take care of them. Hey, you know what? Like Tiffany really said this earlier. She was saying, you know what? I, I feel like, um, you know, there's a problem here and I feel like, you know, I can help you. You see what I'm saying? I'm just saying those are the mindset thoughts. I'll never forget Marianna Cowan saying this. She got divorced. She was a single mom. She had to make a living. She goes to real estate up in Nova Scotia. And she says the first thing that she thinks she can help people with is, is helping them once they expired. I'm a mom. I can help them. I overcame myself as a single mom. I loved it. I thought it was a fabulous connection to how to do the right thing in real estate by people. And she did, right? And she made a, a tremendous living by being empathetic on the phone. Hey, you know what? I saw that. You, and that's what these guys and gals are saying. You sound too monotone and that's not the way you really speak. So you're going through the motions because you know what? You're not emotionally connected to the script that you've been given. You're not. I can hear it in you. It sounds very uh, monotone and you're disconnected and you're going through the motions. And, and, and I think that's because of what you're saying. I don't think it's you. I think it's because what you're saying you don't believe in. Is that fair? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that fair? In a way. <laughs> okay. All right. It, not in a way. It is true. Okay. Been doing this a long time. Now you're saying in a way. You've got to either commit. Let me let me leave everybody with this this phone call, and you can think about this all next week while you're all enjoying the holidays. Okay. If you don't thoroughly believe what you are saying, you are dead, to one extent or the next. It has to be real. It has to be authentic. You have to believe what you're saying. And if you don't, it sounds like this. And if you're going to do this, and then I'm going to do that, and you're going to do this. Oh, by the way, can we stop by? It's not going to work, right? It's it's a failed model from the very beginning. Maybe you get through one or two here and it happens, but in the long run, you won't be building anything. So Flo, 
it's got to be a conversation with Gail, you and I after the holidays that talks about do we believe okay. in what we're doing or not? Because if you don't, we got a real problem. And that is probably starting with my problem. I have to get Gail and you attached to a unique selling proposition around content. We sent you this and we really think it's super valuable and super different. I know that. When it comes to my strategic listing plan, my seven points, I know passionately that that is unique in a big way. In fact, if you really want me to make it unique, I will dive down into any topic that you want to talk about on those seven points and blow you away with how passionate I am and unique I am in my articulation of each one of those things, right? If you don't have some level, you don't have to be me and be that connected. But you got to start to approach it. And David, you might be listening to this too, because if you're not passionate about it, now you're just reading a script that we did. And, and the other day, when you said you had chills when I got you fired up and talked about this, you've got to believe that all the way around the world, you matter to these people. This is a big deal. This is the biggest financial and emotional transaction people make in a lifetime. I don't care if you're down the street or you're around the world. you got to get emotionally connected to that. And if you're not, you have to figure out why not. Make sense? Clearly. Okay. David, give us a final thought here before yeah, we go there's, up. There's oh, some... go ahead, Flo. Go ahead, Flo. Go ahead, no. Flo. Okay. No. There's some, something that I usually try to tell them when I get a chance about us having so much success about uh, selling properties using our seven-point strategic plan. Although I would prefer to have put that uh, earlier in the script. Unfortunately, it's not part of that particular script. So when I get a chance to, to tell them that, I do tell them that, that we've had much success selling properties that expired the first time and uh, we've been able to help the sellers. Much better. Like that. All that's much better. That's much better, right? Cool. All right, guys, listen, good job, you two, especially all the way around the world. Merry Christmas to you two in particular and everybody else. Thanks for being here. No live calls you, next Debbie. No live calls next week. Think about this, digest it, and we'll see okay. you on the other side. 2018, last call live. See you then. Merry Christmas, okay. everybody. Take care. Happy holidays right. and happy new year. Christmas, see you then. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, Merry gang. Christmas. See you, gang. Thanks, See you, buddy. Bye, guys online. Thank you. Danny Northcutt. Timmy, thanks for tuning in.